Psalm chapter 79 tonight. Psalm chapter 79 tonight. 13 verses, <clears throat> seven different points of emphasis tonight. From these 13 verses, you'll see at the top, I <clears throat> often don't do an introduction of any kind, but just this thought here that this is another psalm of Asaph. And so I want to remind you who he was. I am quoting somebody else. They said Asaph was a gifted individual. He understood where the gift came from, and he used his music to praise the Lord and communicate his word to a needy world. Now, that wasn't my quote. That was someone else's quote, but I like it. Asaph was a gifted individual. He understood where the gift came from, and he used his gift, music, and his ability to write and play instruments. He used his music to praise the Lord and to communicate the Lord's word, his word, to a needy world. And we're still talking about him today. God, in his infinite sovereign wisdom, decided to use Asaph throughout every generation and when generations are over, the word of God will always remain. We have a more sure word now, but we have a word that's going to endure forever. And Asaph is an individual that God used to communicate his word. So we're going to look at another psalm of Asaph in Psalm 79. Right away, if you're taking notes, number one on your handout is the defilement. So we're going to start right away. Uh, with the defilement as found in Psalm chapter 79, verses 1, 2, and 3. But before we dive in, let me pray. Psalm 79, the defilement, verses 1, 2, and 3, but let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for the couple songs we got to sing. We thank you for the, oh, couple hundred doors we got to hit, uh, going door to door here a little bit ago. We thank you for the Word of God now. We thank you for the meal that you have provided for us and the time of prayer that we get to have here in a little bit. Thank you for the fellowship, Lord. Speak to us again, as you so often do here at Solid Rock. Speak to us through the pages of the book of Psalms, specifically Psalm 79 tonight. We love you again in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Psalm 79, the defilement, verses 1, 2, and 3. Here we go. O oh God... The heathen are come, what is that next word? The heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. The dead bodies of the servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heavens. And the flesh of thy saints unto the beast of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. And so right away in verses 1, 2, and 3, we see the defilement specifically of the sanctuary and the defilement of the saints by the sinners. And so the word defilement means this, to make unclean, to render foul or dirty in a general sense. And so the sinners of the land went into the tabernacle. They defiled the temple, the sanctuary, and they also defiled the saints of God. I, I have in my, um, my notes about Joseph. And before Joseph died, he says, guys, I'm going to die. You can bury me here, but do not. When God comes through, when he fulfills his promise and he removes you out of the land of Egypt, do not leave my bones here. Take my bones and bury them in our land. And so here we see in verses 1, 2, specifically 2 and 3, the dead bodies of the servants have they given to meat unto the fowls. Verse 3, their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. And so we see a great defilement by the sinners of the sanctuary, verse 1. The heathen are coming to thine inheritance, thy holy temple have they defiled. We see a defilement of the sanctuary and also of the saint by the sinners. 
the defilement. Now verse 4, number 2 tonight, the derision. The derision. You'll see the word derision throughout the Bible. The word derision is the act of laughing at in contempt. It also means an object of derision or contempt, a laughing stock. I'm sure you've heard that before. He became the laughing stock of the team or she became the laughing stock of the play. Well, derision is like those basically mocking. They're mocking. The target of their mockery are the saints in the sanctuary of God. And so we see the derision in verse 4. We are become a reproach. We are like a laughing stock. We are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. It's like the psalmist is saying, God, we have become the laughing stock of the community. The sanctuary is being destroyed, defiled. The saints of God are being destroyed. They're being killed. They're just throwing their bodies out for the, the, the carcasses to be eaten by the fowl. They're just spilling our blood. Nobody cares. There's no burying for us. And now verse 4, we're the derision. We're like the laughing stock of the community. Again, verse 4, we are become as a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. We have lost our testimony. We've lost our sanctuary. We're losing our saints. This is not going well. There is great derision here. The act of laughing at in contempt. But notice verses 5 through 7. He continues. You say, can it get worse? It does. Look at verses 5 through 7. Number 3 tonight, the devoured. The devoured. So you have the defilement of both the sanctuary and the, the, uh, the saint by the sinners. We have the derision. We're now the laughing stock of the community. But it gets worse. Verses 5 through 7, the devoured. The people of God, specifically, that is, this is not God's plan for your life, by the way, <laughs> that you get devoured, that you get destroyed, that you become the derision, the laughing stock of the community. That is not God's desire. But notice God's people in verses five through seven, the devoured. The Bible says, how long, Lord, wilt thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? What he's saying in verse 5, I know we left you. I know we've gone and played the harlot. I know we've gone into idolatry. I know we worship in the high places and we don't worship. I know we've done some wrong. We acknowledge that, but as of now, you're allowing this to happen. We're, we're a complete laughing stock to our neighbors, to the neighboring cities by us. They look at us. They see our sanctuary. They see it's, it's messed up. They see the way we die as saints. This is not good, God. Please help us. How long? How long, Lord, wilt thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? I know this is a righteous jealousy. I know you deserve our love and affection and attention. And I know we went again playing the harlot somewhere else, but we're back. So how long? How long, Lord, wilt thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Look at verse 6. Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. Say, look, you've been pouring your wrath on us and we deserve it, but we're back. So could you please pour out your wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name? For they have, what is that next word in verse 7? For they have devoured Jacob. And laid waste his dwelling place. This is not good. We have defilement in verses 1, 2, and 3. We have derision in verses 4. We're the laughing stock of verse 4. And now, God, we're, we're like devoured. Remember 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So what does devour mean? It means to eat up, to eat with greediness, to eat uh, ravenously as a beast of prey or as a hungry man. Then it gives us an example. We will say some evil beasts have devoured him. What story is that? Joseph. And his brother said, you know what? Let's throw him in this pit and we'll say 
that some evil beasts have devoured him. When that message got to Joseph's dad, did Joseph go out and send a search party? There's no reason to. According to the story that he was told, Joseph's been devoured. There's no reason to search for him. He's done. And Satan wants to devour you and devour me. And the psalmist here is saying in verse number seven, for they, the heathen of verse number uh, five and six, the heathen have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Look, God, they're devouring us. They're eating us up. So we see the second definition of devoured is this, to destroy, to consume with rapidness, I'll say it that way, and violent. Satan wants to destroy you quickly and violently. And here the psalmist is crying out to God in verse 7, 5 through 7, and he's saying we are being devoured by them. So now we quickly move to verse 8. The decline. The decline. He just said in verse 7, For they have devoured Jacob and have laid waste his dwelling place. Now in verse 8, the decline. Oh, remember not against us former iniquities. So up to this point, it's been them, 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 them. They're after us, they're after us. And then he made it personal. Lord, remember not against us former iniquities. Let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. The decline. We are brought very low. Who brought them very low? God did. The Bible, and I believe I've given this to you in your handout. Did I give you James 4.10? Okay, James 4.10 says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. That is your responsibility. Uh, next week, I think either this week or next week's podcast, I've, I've done both outlines. It's about uh, humbling yourself. And you have to put that on. Put on humility. That's up to you. But if you don't, God in his loving kindness will help you with that. And here in Psalm 79, God was helping his people humble themselves. Now, that's not something I pray for. Lord, humble me. I don't pray that ever because God's commanded me to humble myself. Right there again, James 4.10. AJ, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And he, the Lord, shall lift you up. So it is my responsibility to humble myself. But we see in verse 8, Oh, remember not against us former iniquities. Let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. We are brought very low. We bring ourselves very low. That's not what he said. Through this process of defilement, derision, and being devoured, there's been now a decline. Now they've been brought so low, they're going, what are we doing here? We're God's people. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. God did not design us to be devoured by the heathen. So Lord, like he says in verse 8, let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. The decline. I want to encourage you tonight. It's not the point of emphasis. The point of emphasis, as far as I'm concerned, is coming. But I want to encourage you to humble yourself. That's not easy. I have to do that in almost, almost an infinite time, just over, all day. And it's not easy because I want things my way. Am I the only one like that? It's ridiculous how much we want things our way and when they don't go our way. And it's constant I have to humble myself. And that's, that's not, a, a, it's not a proud statement to say that. I'm ashamed to say that I have to keep humbling myself as opposed to waking up saying, Lord, I'm yours today. Whatever happens, I'm going to go with your flow, not the flow, but I'll go with your flow. But I mean, it, it's not an hour that goes by that I don't have opportunities to kick against it or to humble myself. And humbling myself is not natural. Maybe it is for you, but it's not for me. And so this point here, 
He is saying at verse number eight, we are, we've been put in this state of humility and we acknowledge it and we need your help. We need your help, God. We need your mercy speedily. So now notice verses nine through 12. The demolition. The demolition. I've given you the definition there. The act of overthrowing, pulling down or destroying a pile or structure, ruin, destruction, as the demolition of a house or of military works. I want to emphasize that part. This is a st strategic demolition process that must happen. Verse 9 through 12. Verse 9. Help us. Now, did he say help us first? No, you've got verse 8. There's humbling there. They've been brought low. Now he's shouting out, Help us, O God, for our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Wherefore, should the heathen say, Where is thy God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the uh, revenging of the blood of thy servants which is shed. Let the sign of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve thou those that are appointed to die and render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. You know what he's saying? Blow it up. Everything that they've done to us, return it back to them seven, sevenfold. But he doesn't start there. He starts really in verse 8. Remember not our iniquity. Lord, delight in mercy again. Then in verse 9, help us. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. You know what? It's not about us, God. I'm saying help us for the glory of thy name. Right now, your name is being dragged, drugged, whatever, through the mud. This is not good. So for your name's sake, help us, deliver us, and return to them sevenfold. Sevenfold what they've done to us. And by the way, God, there's still some saints that haven't died yet, but they're in the crosshairs. God, deliver them. Spare them. And he goes on and he opens his heart and asks Almighty God to blow it up. Just fix the situation, God. But notice this, another purpose, not just for his name, but lastly tonight, and this is really my point of emphasis, and then I've got a concluding text and we'll be done. Verse 13, the descendants. This is very fitting for all of this stuff in here and the other room and, and the things that are still left to come this weekend for our kids uh, carnival and kids crusade. Very fitting, verse 13. God, I need you to come in here and, and flip the script. Blow it up. Take care of the heathen. Destroy their plans. Spare us, God. Help us. For your name's sake. But lastly, also for the descendants. Verse 13. So we, thy people, and sheep of thy pasture, will give thanks forever. If it stopped there... That would be, you know, okay. But notice how he ends. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. God, if you spare us, we're going to praise you. We're going to shout. We're going to thank God. But we're going to do it for this generation and for all generations to come. Why are we having a kid's crusade? Because we need these children to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And by the way, Many, many, many men and women have been saved, moms and dads, because their children were saved first. And so if we can reach into these homes this weekend and just try to make a difference, why? We need help from God. We absolutely do. But tonight I'd encourage you to humble yourself, get cleaned up, then ask for God's help. And then let him know it's for your name's sake. We want this to be a lighthouse in this community for your name's sake. But I know if I die today, tomorrow, or 100 years from now, I'm going to heaven. But if this community dies today, tomorrow, or 100 years from now, they're not unless they know God. 
And so it may take some things to demonstrate our love to them. But ultimately, we're trying to point people, our descendants, to Jesus Christ. So lastly tonight, Joshua chapter 1. You know these verses. I'm just going to read them, and then we'll be done. God's work will continue on. Remember Esther's uh, uncle, cousin, uncle, Mordecai? Let's just name him. Remember what he said? (laughs) If you don't step up, woman... God's going to use someone. So I'd encourage you to step up. Maybe you're there for such a time as this. And so God's work will continue. Joshua 1 is where we're headed. God's work will continue. But I want to encourage you to do your part while you are here on this earth. And let me give you an example of that. Most of you know it. This has been one of my hobby horses for the last couple years. Joshua chapter 1. Now... Joshua 1.1, we're only going to verse 9 and we're done. Now, after the death of Moses, God's will was finished. Is that what it says? No. But Moses was a big deal. Yep. Well, where's Moses now? And according to verse 1, dead. But after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua. So when you finish Psalms chapter 79, Asaph is saying, God, the heathen are raging. They're destroying us. Your sanctuary, saints, this isn't good. (laughs) Don't remember our past, our iniquities. God, delight in mercy again and help us. Destroy them. And I promise you, God, we will praise you and we will tell this generation and every generation, our descendants will know how good you are. And God tells Joshua in chapter 1 of Joshua that Moses is dead. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, the servant of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, who is dead, but my will is going to continue. Don't just praise me, Moses. Prepare Joshua, because you won't always be here, Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, who is now dead, so I will be with thee. I am the God that doesn't change. I am immutable, unchangeable. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee, Joshua. I will not fail thee, Joshua, nor forsake thee, Joshua. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, Joshua? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, Joshua. Neither be thou dismayed, Joshua. For the Lord thy God is with thee, like I was with with, with Moses. I'm with you, whithersoever thou goest. There's a reason we're doing a kid's crusade. And I was praying earlier. I thought, Lord, we need a a youth pastor. I know there's no office of the youth pastor in the Bible. But we need a youth pastor. And then I got thinking about AC. I got thinking about Abel. I did not think about Alex and Andy. Just kidding. But I'm going, one day I'll get to hire someone. And then the Lord said, why not them? 
Do you understand, like, you four boys are in, like, the best position in the world to have a job without ever doing really anything? I mean, we're ready to move forward. And I'm going, one day, Lord, one day. And God's like, what are you talking about? Was Asaph in Psalm 79 praying for some strange kids to come join the body? He wasn't. And what I mean by strange is other children from other countries. He wasn't saying, God, the heathen have destroyed this country. Give us a new one. That's not what he was saying. God, we're all you have. So help us. And I'm looking at us tonight. You're all we have. And so I'm saying, God, help us. And so it goes back to last week's podcast. Keep yourself clean. Up to this point, Alden hasn't kissed a girl. And, you know, he has a few times, but I mean technically. And the reality is, who better to keep clean than Alden than for us to go to strangers and figure it out? You have a job to do now. I feel like ASAP. I feel like my country's going to hell in a handbasket. And I'm asking God's help. But at the same time, God is saying, well, what about your descendants? What about those that are already in? And so this is my reminder to you. This weekend is an opportunity for you to serve. All these games, all this stuff, the 1, 2, 10, or 30 kids that I'm praying for that come, It's an opportunity for you to serve. And if something goes wrong, is anyone in here going to blame AC? Even legally, he's no responsibility. What better place to train when you're not the one in charge? This is your training ground. This is your ministry. And like, again, I'm Asaph going, God, help us, help us, help us. And God is saying, what are you doing with what I've given you? We're trying to get more children, but we have children. What are we doing to nurture and and, and raise you up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? So as we pray tonight, I want to encourage you to humble yourself. I want to encourage you to ask God, help us. But I also want you to realize you may be the answer to our prayer. You may be who we need. That means on Monday when no one's looking... You need to be strong and have a good courage. That means you need to be in your Bible when no one's looking. That means you need to be growing in grace and in the knowledge of our, When Joshua started out, who was supposed to lead them into the promised land? Moses. But now he's dead. But God says, my will doesn't change. I made a promise. I swore. I swear to those fathers that I would do that. I'm going to fulfill my promise. So Moses blew it. He hit the rock the second time. He's off the scene. So Joshua, I'll use you. And I guarantee you, Joshua, if you blow it, I'll raise up somebody else. I don't want somebody else raised up in my spot. And so I highly encourage you to understand the proving ground that you're on. I don't know what God's going to do. It's been eight years. I don't know what God's going to do, but I feel like the next five years is going to be some major changes in a good way. That's if I'm still here. Even so, come quickly. If the rapture happens, then Alex, make sure. Anyway, I better end on that note right there. That's good. I just want to encourage you. Don't look so far ahead that you miss what's going on right here. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the meal. Thank you for the message. And thank you for our prayer list that we get to look at together and update. In Jesus' name, amen.